Alex Pereira is one of the most dangerous strikers to ever compete in the UFC. All the clinch and the grab. Oh! His calf kicks devastated his opponent's legs and his left hook sent him to another dimension. It will only take Alex seven fights to become a two division champion, the fastest in UFC history. Since young, Alex struggled with alcohol, already drinking while still a teenager. He decided to visit a kickboxing gym and since then fell in love with striking and martial arts. Alex began fighting as an amateur kickboxer a year after he started training and almost immediately started knocking people into orbit. His kickboxing coach at the time dubbed him Poetan or Hands of Stone. His knockout ability did not diminish when he turned pro in 2012. He entered a kickboxing tournament where he would need to fight twice in the same day. Alexandro Pereira! Defeating Klee Silva in the finals and winning his first tournament belt in kickboxing. Vai pra cima o Alexandro, momentos finais do round, ele vai colocando golpes, tá entregue Clay Silva, vai encerrar, acabou! Campeão da categoria de Alex, Sandro Pereira! Alex will compete for the Pan American kickboxing title against Maria Adaro in August 2013. He will knock down Maria twice with knees to the body. Espetacular do Espetacular. Eventually putting him away for good with a right cross. Kickboxing often has tournament style competitions where a fighter is expected to fight multiple times per night. A brutal way of competing to see who is the most dangerous striker. Starting from October 2013, Pereira will fight three back-to-back -back tournaments. He will lose the first two in the semifinals, with the loss of Caesar being a very questionable decision. Olha a combinação do Pereira. But Alex will eventually win the Glory Middleweight Contender Tournament by defeating Dustin Jacoby and Sahak Papayan in the finals. Tonight out of Brazil, introducing Alex Portan Pereira! Dustin will get rocked by Pereira's left hook, which is still relatively unknown at this time. Jacoby could be hurt! But Dustin will get hit again by the same left hook, this time putting him down and all cold for the first time in his career. His fight with Papayan will be a grueling three rounds. Alex would drop the Armenian fighter in the first round, but Papayan would survive the onslaught by Pereira and make it all the way to the end. It was in glory where Alex would meet the most important rival in his career, the style bender, Israel Adesanya or the Black Dragon as he was known at this time. It was a heated rivalry from the very beginning. Adesanya was a much more agile fighter, dancing around Alex in the first round and touching him up from a distance. <laughs> Nearing the end of the round, Alex will corner Izzy in the ring and force him to fight in the pocket, where Alex will have a power advantage. The second round, Alex came out much more aggressive, hoping to back Izzy up into the corner and control his footwork. Izzy managed to dodge most of Pereira's punches, but still got caught with heavy strikes. In the final round, Alex was much more fatigued than the life for the style bender, and Izzy will control the fight from the outside and outpoint Alex to finish the round. Alex will win the decision, In the blue corner. <laughs> but many believe the fight could have easily gone to Izzy, suspecting some foul play with the judging. These two will meet again one year later, this time in Pereira's hometown, Sao Paulo, Brazil. In their second outing, we see Alex employing more head movement in his defense, 
perhaps learning a bit from the style bender, dodging more strikes compared to the last time they fought. But keeping your hands low comes with risks, and Alex would get rocked in the second round by Izzy. And force the ref to give him a standing 8 count, surviving the second round. Realizing that he's now behind on points, Alex will bite down on his mouthpiece and march Izzy down, catching him on the chin with his signature left hook. Reminding everyone that he can outpoint Alex all you want, but all he needs is one shot. And Sean Strickland can back me up on this. Every round, he hit me with at least one punch where I'm like, I don't know how that would have felt with a four ounce glove, so. But the difference is, the man touches you and you just die. Alex will stay a few more years in kickboxing, racking on wins after win against some of the toughest middleweights in the world. His left hook will be a nightmare for anyone that dare challenge him for the glory middleweight belt. Six, seven, eight. It's over. It's over. It's over. Getting out of the white corner in his fourth defense of the belt. Glory middleweight champion of the world. He is Alex Poetan Ferreira. The middleweight championship of the world. Psycho Willness. That TKO finish. Oh, high kick. Wow. Two. My goodness, and he's Three. busted Willness Four. wide open. Jeez, what Goes power up. that Pereira had. And now Pereira going for the oh. finish. What a leaping oh. knee. Doesn't Three. know what's hit him. Four. It's no and that's it. It's over. Easy work for Poetan Pereira. When he got tired of knocking people out in the middleweight, Alex decided to move up and challenge Donaghy Albina for the interim light heavyweight title. Even as the middleweight champion, he's defended the title four times and he's wanted a new challenge now, so he's stepping up. Here we go, light heavyweight championship of the world on the line. Pereira comes out, guns blazing. Albina will survive the first two rounds, even returning some heavy hands in the second. High kicks later for Pereira and a bait a little In the third round, Alex would drop Albina with a knee to the body. Cabeda eats a knee now, trying to hold on. Can Poetan put him down? And that is a knockdown for Pereira. Then proceed to introduce Albina to his left hook. Oh no! He's done it! He has done it! Glory's first ever! Becoming the first fighter in Glory to hold two titles in two different weight classes simultaneously. The best pound for pound. In the world today. And now, interim light heavyweight champion of the world, Alex Pereira. Pereira will defend his middleweight belt one more time with a spectacular knockout at the buzzer. Here we go. I mean, he keeps his hands low. It's just got sharp eyes, but by Rax hurt. No, his nose is already winning. Stop! And three months later, we'll move up and challenge the light heavyweight champ, Artem Vakatov. This will be the hardest fight for Alex in recent years, but he will manage to outstrike his opponent and win by split decision. He's figured it out. <laughs> Look at that. There's those low kicks from Vakitov. But the problem is, like, when you throw your low kick, you get those big punches thrown at your head. But I think this is a better round for Pereira. I mean, he's coming forward, he's a little bit more active, putting the combinations. And that will do it. It's anybody's guess. And new glory light heavyweight champion of the world, Alex Poetan Pereira. Alex has achieved tremendous success in kickboxing, but his career was stagnating. He still remained relatively unknown outside of hardcore fight fans, a fact that Adesanya was quick to point out in an interview in March 2020. But then, um, yeah, this fight I fought and I got knocked out, my first and only ever knockout loss. And then, and even the same guy now doesn't, he watches all my fights, but I've never ever watched any of his fights. At the end of the day, 
No one knows who the f he is. And he's gonna be that guy when I'm world champion, when I'm a legend. He's gonna be at some pub talking some shit about I beat that guy one time, trying to get a dick sucked from a crack whore or some shit. Bruh. This will light a fire inside Pereira and drive him to pursue MMA wholeheartedly. At this point, Alex already had a few fights in MMA around four years prior, with a record of two wins and one loss. But his opponent, Thomas Powell, has done his research. His plan is to get Pereira up against the cage, use takedowns, tire him out. And like any smart MMA fighter, he would initiate wrestling as soon as possible, hoping to take Alex to the ground and finish him there. At least that was a game plan. Alex will introduce Thomas to his left hook, this time wearing a much smaller 4 ounce glove. Oh. Oh. Whoa. And out! That's the power. After this fight, Alex will go back and defend his glory light heavyweight belt one last time against Artem Vakatov. Just like last time, it was a very close fight, with Alex scoring more strikes than his opponent. But the judge will deduct the point against Alex for clinching, a questionable decision potentially causing him to fight. Oh, one on. point down! Oh, I don't one point down! I don't agree one with point that down. one. One point down! I'm Holy. sorry, I don't agree with that. Yes. Well, that changes the entire complexion of this fight. Spinning. All for your winner by majority decision. And new light heavyweight champion of the world. Just two months later, Alex made his UFC debut, and his reputation and glory would precede him. His UFC debut, and this is one of my most look forward to moments. This is one of the most ferocious fighters that has ever entered into the sport. The former glory kickboxing champion, Alex Poatan Pereira! His opponent, Andreas Makalidis, would waste no time clinching up with Alex tanking him down and trying to wear him out with grappling. This is an excellent opening for this fight. Yeah, look at this. But Alex, now training with Glover Teixeira, would get back up on his feet and stay relaxed in the clinch. In fact, Andreas looked much more exhausted by the second round. Andreas Mikhailidis, who seemed exhausted on the stool. Yep. And Alex wasted no time putting him asleep with a flying knee. Speaking to with all the clinch and the grab. Oh! for a long time your debut did not disappoint thank you very much everybody that supported me i also thank my opponent for making this fight with me Rare's next opponent bruno silva is also a striker having knocked out all seven of his last opponents but when facing alex bruno will grapple and get his first takedown of his ufc career first takedown attempt for silva and he gets it a very smart choice but Alex will manage to get up right away and proceed to outstrike Bruno on the feet. Knee up top. Only on UFC fight pass. Oh, dips to the body. You can see when he starts dancing a little bit, starting to find it. <laughs> oh, Pereira has him against the fence. A shot from Silva in return. Your winner by unanimous decision, Alex Portal. Alex's meteoric rise would propel him to face the middleweight wildman Sean Strickland. This was a risky fight for both Sean Strickland and Alex Pereira. Alex, still unranked at this time, will be facing the number 4 ranked veteran of the cage. Being a wildman, Sean had no plans to take things to the ground, instead choosing to stand and bang with Alex, because grappling is gay. I mean, you're trying to take your nutsack and put it in a man's face and smother him with it. Bruh. I'm not saying it's gay, but I mean, if that's not gay, what, it, what is gay? That plan will backfire. Alex will touch him up with calf kicks, slowing Sean down, feint a level change, and introduce Sean to his left hook. Both guys stand very straight up. Yes. Good, because he's... Oh! You can't 
cannot play this game with this guy. Right. Maybe grab him. Maybe try to rush him a little bit. Look at what happened. My goodness. UFC 281. Alex has finally chased down Izzy from that bar in Sao Paulo, Brazil. And these two longtime rivals will finally face off in the biggest arena in combat sports. You're in a position now where you have beaten almost everyone in the division. Look, we know who's next, that poor time, poor. Israel being the most dominant middleweight since Anderson Silva, and Alex, the only man to ever finish Izzy. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the main event of the evening for the undisputed middleweight championship of the world. The fight started with Alex sneaking in calf kicks one after another. But almost like deja vu, Izzy would catch prayer again at the end of the first round. Saved by the bell, Alex would recompose himself and come back strong in the second. You never know. Surprising everyone when he decided to take Izzy down. Oh my goodness. And Pereira gets the take in the third, Izzy reversed the takedown attempt and would control Alex on the ground for the majority of the round. Now visibly more tired and possibly behind on the scorecard, Alex Corner would urge him to knock out the champion. Enough, enough. You need to get to him. You need to have knock. You have to knock him out. Listen, you need to knock him out. Advice he would take to heart. Now age 35, Alex began struggling to make middleweight, as he would regularly cut 25 plus pounds to make weight. And this dehydration makes your brain much more susceptible to punches, something Izzy capitalized on during the rematch, knocking out Alex in the second round. Again. Alex decided to move up to light heavyweight in July 2023. Now one weight class heavier, Alex is no longer the giant in the division. And his first test will be the former UFC champion Jan Blachowicz, the Polish power. This will be the biggest test of his career. To nobody's surprise, Jan wasted no time trying to take Pereira down. Alex would defend for a while, but eventually get taken down and controlled for the remainder of the round. With one round in the bank, Jan would strike with Alex in the beginning of the second round. But Alex quickly started chopping at his legs with calf kicks and left a welt on his lead leg. Blachowicz decided that taking Alex down would be the smarter choice. But now much more tired than before from all the grappling, Alex would get back up and start breaking Jan apart with strikes for the remainder of the fight, winning him the split decision. I mean, that left leg is disgusting. Look at that Dang. welt on that thing. Nice jab by Pereira. Oh! He's stuck with it now. By split decision, Alex Pereira! Não, com certeza, a muito dura. Pô, é um cara que eu sabia que queria vir colocar pro chão. Well, it was a very hard fight, but I think I was able to show you guys a bit of my ground. So be patient, my friends, because I'm going to be able to show it all soon. Now, having defeated Jan Blachowicz, Alex will fight for the vacant light heavyweight title against another former champion, Yuri Prohashka. Yuri, being another heavy-handed striker, would decide to stand with Alex at first. But Alex has a way of turning strikers into grapplers very quickly. Look at that. Wow. Wow. Can I take too many at all? You can't. Oh, no. his, his legs already hurt, Joe. It's already hurt. It's, it's already, already hurt. That's unexpected. And oh. again, he gets it. Yuri's trying to take him down. That's smarter, Yuri. Alex will show a lot of improvement in his ground game, using the fence to get up to his feet. In the second round, 
Yuri will attempt to stand with Alex again, but this time it will be a fatal mistake. It's a big right hand. Winning this title has made Alex Pereira a two-division champion in two of the biggest combat sport organizations in the world. A near impossible feat for another fighter to replicate. There's a guy that said that I was going to be a guy to just stay in a bar, so that motivated me and he rescued me from a bar to be here today. Hey Adesana, come to daddy. Alex Boatan Pereira. <laughs>